A Consumer Guide Consumer Guide Introduction Finding the occasional straw of truth awash in an ocean of confusion and bamboozle requires intelligence, vigilance, dedication, and courage. But if we don't practice those tough habits of thought, we cannot hope to solve the truly serious problems that face us and we risk becoming a nation of suckers, up for grabs by the next charlatan who comes along. Carl Sagan, The Fine Art of Baloney Detection A fool and his money are soon parted. If it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. When people are desperate, they're easily manipulated. There are some greedy people around. We kind of laugh when they get ripped off like a few movies, The Flim Flam Man, The Sting, Lady Eve, etc. American Greed and other shows are sad but they're big time scams. Small time scams are like my mother who was paying a telephone rental charge of six bucks a month for over 30 years for a telephone that was worth 30 bucks. I called up the phone company and asked them what was that funny worded charge on the bill. She said it was the rental fee. Banks gouge us all the time. They call it nickel and diming. If you see a weird looking charge on a bill, call them and ask them. What's a processing charge? They charge you to process transactions that are part of their business? It's crazy. I don't buy anything online. Amazon and Walmart are big online retailers. I trust them but not too much beyond that. Ask yourself what do you really need? Don't buy stuff you don't need. Sales are just psychological ploys to get you to think you're getting a deal. If you're a true shopaholic, get my shopping book for knowledge about everything sold. The most common consumer fraud occurs with people trying to lose weight, trying to look beautiful and young, women over 30, the most gullible demographic around, people with medical problems, people desperate for money, get rich schemes, people who want to save money, get a great deal or get rich. Infomercials are silly. You can buy most of that junk at Walmart. Cons and scams can occur in the unlikeliest of places like at your local church with the unlikeliest people like your so-called priest or even pretty girls who commit a lot of scams which are never reported by the red-faced guys who thought they were going to get sex but got taken for another type of ride instead. The object of any con game is to get you to part with your money or other thing of value. The con man or woman uses charm and appeals to your sense of greed. Small cons are meant to deprive you of whatever you might have on you like selling cheap perfume for name brand perfume on the street corner versus the big con where they send you home to get more money. The biggest rule of being a wise consumer is to live life for what you do and think. Don't define yourself by material goods. Don't think that material goods will do something for your state of mind because they really won't. Buy what you need and what you can afford. Don't buy things because you want to get an emotional lift out of it. That's about it. Go to number 640, number 380 and number 332 at the library to see if they got anything interesting there. Look through the issues of Consumer Reports, consumerreports.org to see what they say about products you are interested in buying. I tell you to question yourself before you buy anything to see if you really need it. All of us have felt the sting of buying something that doesn't work or doesn't work as well as promised, maybe it breaks down after a week or you order something online and it never comes. For everything else there is the Better Business Bureau, bbb.org, ripoffreport.com, and your local and state government attorney general offices which are responsible for consumer protection. Many have special consumer protection offices which I list in this book which you can also get through publications.usa.gov. I tell you how to complain effectively. Don't say anything that looks bad in an email, letter, or conversation that could be recorded. State your case logically and calmly. I list a lot of consumer and professional slash trade organizations. I cover things like product recalls and extended warranties. I provide a big list of company websites worldwide. I tell you how to opt out of or get off mailing lists for telemarketing, junk mail, etc. For email, most spam has some unsubscribe button on it. If not, your email provider has a button to block that sender. I tell you how to deal with contractors. Get a good one up front through Angie'sList.com by reading reviews or word of mouth locally.
contractors are the biggest rip-off. They created a TV industry, several TV shows where they fix bad home improvement jobs. Every company must produce a safe product. If they don't, I explain product liability laws. Many accountants are too lazy to go over your books to get you the lowest taxes. You have to find the best one. There are sales conference for dentists, doctors, and veterinarians on how to rip patients off. They call it you upselling and stuff like that but it's all nickel and diming BS. If they quote you a price for any procedure then they say come back for checkup, revision, touch up or follow up, that's another hundred bucks and if you are the sucker that thinks that's right and keeps your mouth shut, you pay or it goes to a bill collector. You have to say we agreed on a price, that was the contract for the entire procedure, nothing extra for touch UPS. It's all intimidation. They got their big offices and they make it all look their big, legitimate dudes and you're just another small fry in their machine but you have to say that's BS, that's not right. Big companies routinely gouge people by adding BS sounding terms on a bill to make it seem routine like charging $6 rental every month for a $30 phone for 30 years. That's what they did to my mother until I looked at the bill and said what's that charge for? You can't trust any company no matter how big they seem. Most people don't know anything about Google's cozy relationship with the NSA. Nowadays on the internet some people unite and take action. There are many YouTube videos with people talking about how they got ripped by a company. Tell a company you're going to put up the story on ripoffreport.com, scamguard.com, Facebook and YouTube and see if they change their tune then. I created this book to tell you what's going on in the retail sales world. Publications.usa.gov, Consumer Handbook Chapter 1 Consumer Interests Consumer Behavior, Why We Buy Beyond Function, What Is It That Makes People Buy Things Off the top of my head, I'll list several things that I think make people buy things. I believe the aspiration to possess material things to a modest level of comfort is good but beyond that, it cannot compensate for an empty soul. We have a societal problem of empty souls. People don't realize they have true natures they should try to follow in order to honor their true essences as human beings and try to stay inspired about their lives by day. They buy into the illusions of the world which is to be successful according to its standards, buy a bunch of stuff in order to feel good, capitalist materialism, and buy into pop culture entertainment as the cutting edge of life which they think they should admire and try to imitate. This is the cult of consumerism, seek happiness by buying things because you weren't strong enough to find your own identity and live by it away from this brainwash. Instead, you let yourself get seduced by the corporate capitalist agenda of the world which is to constantly buy new things in an effort to give yourself some kind of psychological boost about how cool, privileged, special and great you are. For the elitists, buying things makes them feel superior and exclusive. It's a class thing, a socio-economic thing. Nobody really needs a BMW or a Hummer but when you buy these things, you're making a statement to the world about how big, bad, cool, powerful and rich you are. People buy things to compensate for an empty soul. My belief is that most people have empty souls. They are probably successful by capitalist societal standards with a job that earns them a decent paycheck but they are sacrificing their free time doing something they don't really love to do and are not tapped into their own essences as human beings. As a result of this, they have a gnawing sense of emptiness all the time deep down inside but don't understand what it is so they allow themselves to get seduced by commercial advertising and publicity which is trying to sell you an emotion, namely a temporary good feeling. It doesn't matter if it's good tasting food, the feeling of you driving a sleek car, how marvelous you look with that new dress or new hair color, how cheek you look sipping wine in an uppity restaurant, reading a frivolous magazine, listening to the latest pop culture CD, it's all the same, make the consumer feel good in the moment. All these things fail for me because my connection is to my soul. My life is a search to hold onto my own personal standard of how it should be lived which is a meld of inspired sensuous aesthetic hedonistic loving actions to make me feel great but how many people are like this? Not too many. Most people work a dull job then want some diversion to get themselves out of their dull lives for a minute or two. 
They get a healthy paycheck with disposable income but don't have the luxury of time to pursue bohemian activities like I do because I don't play homies game and buy into that world. They then pursue the system's version of happiness, go to the mall on the weekend not just to buy something but for the experience of it to go out, do something, be seen, enjoy the event and, of course, to buy something to make themselves feel like good successful clones but it doesn't sustain them because they're right back next week buying some crap to fill up their otherwise empty lives. Meanwhile the business people are licking their chops because they've got a society of empty people working then spending their money trying to chase a good feeling for a minute or two. A guy like me stands on the sidelines, sees this capitalist agenda and thinks it's good for people like me because it gives me the consumer goods I want at low prices but it's horrible for the karma of the world. It promotes vain, uppity people who associate a person's worth or character with how much brand name clothing he or she is wearing and, on a more global level, we have a society of people hooked on material excess while half of the world is either hungry or can't afford even the most basic drugs. My point in all of this is if you are in business, focus on making people feel good both in the experience of shopping in your store or on your website and with the product itself. It has to make them feel good for at least a minute or two. Appeal to their feel-good emotions. If you're a consumer, maybe I can inspire you to be more like me. Laugh contemptuously at this stupid system then go off and try to live a glorious life for yourself away from all this crap. Some other reasons why we buy are as follows. For social reasons, to possibly meet a mate. The retail marketplace is where just about everybody goes. You can see people, be seen, meet new friends who could possibly become lovers and mates. To try to imitate and live out this ideal of glamour and pop culture coolness put forth by the commercial media. The problem with this is that it's fake. It's a fantasy. It has nothing to do with real life as lived day by day yet how many people fall for it. To make the scene. Trendy people and others in general want to go where the people go to be a part of this social activity to feel connected to the community. People are looking for action, entertainment and fun for their otherwise dull, uninspired lives and also looking for sex and slash or love. To my way of thinking, shopping and buying new things will not accomplish these things but I must admit that I'm wrong because plenty of guys have attracted girls because of the car they drive. Plenty of chicks have attracted guys because they were wearing trendy clothes and plenty of couples have met at the mall so despite my anti-shopping bent, we are just fallible human beings. We can't all be enlightened, seeking deep, profound, inspired experiences. Much of the humson condition is common and mundane. The shopping mall provides us all with an equal ticket to this brand of common human life. To keep up with the Joneses aka status anxiety. It's a status thing with a lot of people. Rather than people being satisfied with their own status within themselves, the empty ones don't feel good unless they have the biggest house, the biggest swimming pool, the latest car, the trendiest clothes, the latest CD put out by some pop culture phony. The marketplace is the great equalizer. Everybody can go be among the masses provided they are willing to buy something. If you don't buy anything, it's private property. They can kick you out so the marketplace is elitist in this sense. You need money and you have to buy things. In a sense, it's a sub-community of materialistic people buying and selling things. Other types of people are not welcome. Beyond function, it's all about selling things by making people feel good and slash or look good. If you want to see how this is done, watch TV infomercials. They are geared to people's base desires, their vanity and to make a quick pitch to reel them in. Try number 306.309, number 658.83 or HF5415.30 at the library. Buyer's Remorse Info Buyer's remorse is the sense of regret after having made a purchase, usually a big purchase like a car, computer, or house. I got buyer's remorse a long time ago when I got sucked into the hype of video games bought the Atari system and didn't use it for more than 20 minutes total because when I come home at the end of the day, I don't want to do anything, least of all play a pesky video game. That's how I learned over time to buy only things that I need, not anything with any glitter or hype attached to it. 
don't buy anything on impulse. Wait a day or two before you buy something you can barely afford or that seems kind of frivolous to you. There are a few three-day laws around that allow you to back out of big-ticket purchases even after you've signed the contract. en.wikipedia.org slash wiki slash buyer single quote s underscore remorse. wisegeek.com slash what hyphen is hyphen buyers hyphen remorse dot hdm. psychology.wikia.com slash wiki slash buyer single quote s underscore remorse. door-to-door slash direct service salesman. Door-to-door -door sales are all but gone because of our fear of crime except maybe out in rural areas. The modern version of the door-to-door -door salesperson is the flea market vendor, the craft show or gun show vendor, people who sell at trade shows and other public events at convention centers plus people who hold seminars, demonstrations, and Tupperware type parties. There are still a few door-to-door -door sales people around. The first thing you do when one comes calling is stay safe either by refusing him entry or calling a friend on the phone before you let him into your home. The salesman should identify himself immediately and show you a piece of legitimate ID like a driver's license or an employment ID card. Ask for sales literature and then call local stores that might sell the same merchandise to compare prices. Some door-to-door -door products might be overpriced. Don't be pressured into buying something. Watch for the warning signs an offer of a free gift if you buy a product. An offer that is only good for that day or you are told that a neighbor just made a purchase. If you feel threatened or intimidated, ask the person to leave. Don't leave the person unattended in any room of your home. If you are suspicious, report the incident to the police immediately. The door-to-door -door sales rule, or cooling off rule gives you the right to cancel certain purchases costing $25 or more in non-retail store sales situations like your house, your work, a hotel room or convention hall where you heard a sales pitch slash seminar, etc. According to the FTC, FTC.gov, their obligation is to tell you about your cancellation rights at the time of purchase and give you two cancellation forms, one to keep, one to send. When you send it, Get a U.S. Postal Service paperwork saying you sent it like either a receipt or certified mail return receipt which you get back when the receiver gets it. If you didn't get a cancellation form, write it out yourself stating exactly what you are cancelling. Notify the company in writing by midnight of the third business day following the sale. Saturdays are considered business days but Sundays and holidays are not. The seller must tell you about your cancellation rights and give you two dated copies of a cancellation form showing the seller's name and address and explaining your right to cancel. These federal cancellation rights apply to purchases made in locations outside the seller's normal place of business, in other words, at a house party, a temporarily rented room or in your home. The states might have additional cancellation laws that protect consumers. Check with your state or local consumer protection agency for your rights. The three-day cooling-off rule generally applies for all direct sales by a salesman, consumer parties like lingerie or Tupperware parties, a salesman's hotel room or any place other than the salesman's regular, permanent place of business. This is a no-questions-asked rule. Simply contact the salesman or mail him a letter, preferably certified before three days after the sale. Once you cancel, you have a right to a refund within 10 days. The seller must let you know when the product will be picked up and must return any paperwork and trade-ins within that time. Within 20 days, the seller must pick up the item or reimburse you for any shipping expenses if you send it back yourself. If you do not return it, you still are responsible under the contract. If you paid by credit card, cancelled the contract within 3 days, have not yet paid the credit card bill and still have a problem getting a refund, dispute the charges with your credit card company under the Fair Credit Billing Act. Some of these guys are sleazy. They will act like they didn't receive your notice of cancellation and do whatever they can to avoid paying you back. Exemptions to the three-day rule are Purchases under $25 Real estate, insurance, or securities Emergency home repairs Purchases made entirely by mail or the telephone. Automobiles. Arts and crafts. If you have any concerns about door-to-door -door salespeople, contact. Direct Selling Association.
1666 K Saint N W. Number 1010. Washington DC 20006. 202-293-5760 Fax, 202-463-4569 DSA.org Consumer Privacy If you want consumer privacy, heed the following advice. Pay for local purchases with cash, rather than by check or credit card. Ask manufacturers, catalog, or magazine subscription companies charities and others with whom you do business not to sell your name to others for marketing purposes. Don't release your social security number except to an employer, government agency, lender, or credit bureau that requires it to identify you. Don't give anyone your credit card or checking account numbers unless you're making purchases with them and don't put credit card numbers on your checks. When filling out warranty or other information cards, don't include optional or unnecessary personal information. Federal law gives you the right to ask telemarketers to take your name off of their lists and not to call you again. Keep records of their names, addresses, and the dates of your requests. File a complaint with the Federal Communications Commission, FCC.gov if they don't remove your name from their marketing lists once you have made your request. Personal information is easily obtained by companies promoting sweepstakes, contests, and prize offers. Be careful to check out the companies before deciding to do business with them or releasing personal or financial information. Contact your state or local consumer agency or Better Business Bureau for information about any company. These types of promotions are in the top 10 consumer complaints nationwide, companies promoting a contest or offering something for free in order to get your name to either send you unsolicited advertising products or sell their mailing list to other businesses. PrivacyAlliance.org, Online Privacy Alliance UnderstandingPrivacy.org, Privacy Leadership Initiative PrivacyRights.org EnaniMouse.com Epic.org, Electronic Privacy Info CallForAction.org 800-647-1756 Free Booklet, ABCs of Privacy Chapter 2 a Consumer Services Guide Professional Services Info Guide All professionals belong to professional trade organizations, some belong to state or federal licensing organizations and all have standards of conduct which they must abide by, otherwise, they'll lose their license and not be allowed to work at their chosen professions. Your first line of defense in checking someone out is to determine whether they're a member in good standing in their professional organization. These organizations have a national headquarters and usually state and even municipal chapters and will provide you with information on their members on request. Send to the Consumer Information Center, Pueblo, Colorado, 81009 publications.usa.gov, 202-208-7679-888-8 Pueblo for the free Consumers Resource Handbook which contains the addressees of several hundred trade organizations. Some con artists get phony diplomas made up and set up a practice. Some disbarred lawyers and doctors who have lost their licenses simply move, hang up their old diplomas on the wall and set up a practice. The world is so complicated that nobody checks until they get a few complaints but then it's too late. Within every profession, there are incompetent, lazy professionals who are licensed but have a bad track record so if you want to be vigilant, Check them out with their professional boards slash organizations before you do business. Accountants Info Guide In hiring an accountant or a tax consultant to fill out your tax forms, the IRS has reported that many of these so-called professionals file incorrect returns. Many set up business for the tax season and vanish very soon after so your best bet is to stick with a nationally known chain like H&R Block. You are ultimately responsible for your own tax returns so make sure you get a qualified tax accountant to do the work for you. There is a difference between ordinary public accountants who generally have no licensing requirements and certified public accountants, CPAs, which are college educated and have to pass rigorous tests before they're certified. To file a complaint against a CPA or to check one out, contact American Institute of Certified Public Accountants. Harborside Financial Center 
201 Plaza 3. Jersey City, New Jersey, 07311-3881. 201-938-3175. Educat at AICPA.org. AICPA.org. The ICPA may refer you to a local office in your state to resolve the dispute or they may investigate themselves. You can also complain to your state's Office of Accountancy. AAQ.org, American Accounting Association. AAFA.com, American Association of Finance and Accounting. AACPA.org, Hispanic. ACAUS.org, 212-334-2078. Association of Chartered Accountants American Society of Women Accountants 800-326-2163 703-506-3265 Fax, 703-506-3266 ASW.org Dental Services Info Guide The following is a brief article about dentistry. For more information, go to number 617.64 or RK61 to RK527 at the library. Teeth have an outer coating of enamel followed by dentin which surrounds pulp, the live area that has blood, blood, and nerves in it. People get two sets of teeth over a lifetime, the primary teeth that appear in infancy and last for several years to be replaced by the permanent teeth before adolescence. There are four main types of teeth. Incisors, the front teeth. Canines or cuspids, the pointed teeth on either side of the incisors. Bicuspids or premolars, the mostly flat top teeth after the canines. Molars, the large, flat top teeth at the back of the mouth. The third molars are called the wisdom teeth. During both primary and permanent teething, the gums may become swollen and red. Children may like to chew with their new teeth which is why they often like to suck on pacifiers during this period of time. Most teeth erupt normally but sometimes the last few to come out may be twisted or otherwise off-kilter because the jaw is already overcrowded. Such teeth are called impacted tooth. Impacted wisdom teeth can often become painful and infected and may have to be extracted. If the teeth are not straight, a condition often called malocclusion or bad bite. An orthodontist can put braces on them to try to straighten them. The most common dental problem is tooth decay slash cavities. Bacteria in the mouth mixes with saliva and food particles to form deposits called plaque which break down the tooth over time, eating away at the enamel and dentin until there's a hole right to the pulp and you feel pain whenever you eat. If not treated, the tooth could get infected and die. Treatment includes either a filling to patch the hole, a root canal where the inside pulp is removed and replaced with an inert substance or extraction, simply pulling the tooth out to eliminate the problem. The general guidelines for good tooth care are as follows. Limit the amount of sugar in the diet. Eat a well-balanced diet of healthy foods along with calcium in them. Don't eat, especially sugary foods, before bedtime. Brush your teeth twice a day, especially at bedtime. Floss once a week or so. Get a new toothbrush every three or four months. Other common dental problems are gingivitis which is an inflammation of the gums and bruxism which is tooth grinding. Dentists are in business to make money. Braces are often prescribed for cosmetic reasons to supposedly straighten a child's crooked teeth. Be wary when the dentist recommends braces for your child. They'll try to make you feel guilty. Children got along without them all through history until recently. Get a second opinion. Dental care is largely about prevention, mainly, brush your teeth, floss, eat healthy foods that contain nutrients and calcium and get regular checkups to take care of problems before they deteriorate further. The general line of reasoning is that bacteria which causes tooth decay build up in the mouth within 24 hours of eating so in order to avoid most tooth problems. Brush your teeth at least once every 24 hours. Both simple and complex carbohydrates, which contain sugar and starches, get caught in the mouth and stuck between the teeth where they change into plaque which attracts bacteria which destroys tooth enamel. There are many toothpastes on the market. All contain abrasives. 
The best kind are the plaque and tartar fighting kind which contain substances to fight the buildup of these substances in the mouth. Modern dentistry is focused on prevention rather than treatment of dental problems. Once permanent teeth start arriving in children, there are protective sealants that dentists use that can coat the teeth, particularly the cavity-prone back teeth. Permanent teeth that are lost or broken can be repaired with either a crown, a bridge, or a dental implant. The most common tooth cleaning technique is bleaching with a peroxide solution. Bonding is a coating applied to the teeth which covers stains and may be used to build up damaged teeth. A laminate veneer is a layer of material stuck onto a tooth which may last several years. A tooth has five sides, four sides, and the top. The extent and cost of repair is determined by how many of these sides are destroyed and have to be built up again. One side damage needs only a simple filling. However, if the sides are decayed, it usually requires a root canal and possibly a crown slash cap. If the tooth is totally decayed to the bottom, the procedure will require first a root canal then a process of rebuilding the tooth via a supporting post cemented into the canal area followed by the cementing of a crown slash cap onto it. Periodontics is the specialty that involves the supportive tissues of the teeth, namely the gums and the underlying bone structure. The main disease in this area is gingivitis. An inflammation of the gums. It's very common, caused by plaque which attracts bacteria and often goes undetected and undiagnosed. During pregnancy, due to hormonal changes, women are susceptible to pregnancy gingivitis. Braces are basically metal and wire used to straighten teeth, put into both children and adults. In my opinion, it's overrated, often done for cosmetics reasons overdone in many cases just so that the dentist can make some money but if you want pretty teeth, go for it. Malocclusion is the dental term for a bad bite where the top and bottom teeth meet unevenly, in an ideal set of teeth, the upper front teeth are slightly in front of the lower front teeth with the rear teeth meeting evenly. Most people have some malocclusion but it only needs treatment if it's serious and either causes overbite or underbite. Orthodontists correct teeth by inserting corrective devices, usually braces. To find one, check the ADA directory usually found in libraries or call the American Association of Orthodontists, 800 straight or aaortho.org. Restorative dentistry has developed considerably in the past 30 years. Not only are complete tooth restorations now possible but there are now dental implants available that can replace missing teeth. The most common way to whiten teeth is strong, abrasive toothpaste usually designed for smokers, however, they wear the enamel down and could expose root surfaces thus causing sensitive teeth. A newer method to whiten and clean your teeth is an oral irrigator, a little high-pressure hose-like device that you can spray around on the inside of your mouth. You can buy dental mirrors in the dental section of your local drugstore. Some aggressive whitening methods are Bleaching either a home kit or done by the dentist at his office. The procedure involves putting a 10 to 15% carbamide peroxide solution onto your teeth or onto a mouth guard then wearing it for a while over a number of sessions. Dentists use a coating on the gums to protect them during this procedure. Be careful about damaging the gums if you do it at home. The peroxide is an acid. Bonding, direct is a procedure whereby the tooth is either sanded down and a gluey resin applied to seal it up or, indirect, sanded down and a laminate veneer glued onto it which is like a fake fingernail and more expensive than direct bonding. Crown slash caps, usually made out of porcelain, usually used to restore decayed teeth can be used to whiten a set of discolored teeth although it's quite expensive. Contrary to conventional wisdom, the wisdom teeth need not be removed if the teeth are healthy and in good position. They can be an asset as healthy teeth to help chew food. The problem arises if they grow in wrong, grow in partially, are impacted or get infected because they're back in the mouth and attract a lot of plaque. A fixed bridge is a fake tooth joined between two teeth to replace a lost tooth or teeth. Dentures are removable teeth used to replace lost teeth. There are dental sealants that can be put on the teeth to help prevent tooth decay. They work much like nail polish applied with a brush then left to dry and harden. They are most commonly used on children. Nothing works as well as the real thing. 
try to keep your teeth before considering dentures. Lasers are used for some dental procedures like cleaning by dental specialists. Find them in the phone book. Dental insurance plans are popular but they often offer only strictly defined benefits, the costs increasing with the more they cover. They often don't cover cosmetic procedures. Most plans require some kind of co-payment for services. There are four basic types of plans. You can buy either one of the following, a few of them or all of them together. Diagnostic and preventive. X-rays, cleaning. Basic. Restorations, endentics, extractions. Major. Dentures, crowns, bridges. Orthodontics. Crooked teeth. There are several basic types of dental insurance plans that are similar to regular health insurance plans like Employer plans HMO Preferred provider Fee for service slash indemnity Every state dental society has a peer review organization that hears cases of patient complaints against dentists just like a mini trial. If you don't find satisfaction there, you can file a case of malpractice through the state court system. Be forewarned that 80% of malpractice cases are won by the dentists. The most common way to win is if the dentist allows a hygienist to do a procedure he's supposed to do or violates ethics such as takes advantage of an anesthetized patient sexually. If you have a problem with a dentist, first try to solve it with him or her. If you can't solve it, go to the state dentistry board where they'll try to resolve it through either an informal mediation type setting or a more formal committee review board where they may examine your teeth and compare them to the dentist's records then make an objective evaluation. If the problem is one of malpractice in some manner, proceed just like with medical malpractice except, in this case, contact the state dental board and slash or the state attorney's office. If the dentist has his assistant do the work he's supposed to do, that's grounds for a lawsuit. Women and men who practice bulimia, eating disorder of forcing yourself to throw up food, often lose their tooth because the acids from the food material they vomit out often decays the teeth over time. Clean your toothbrush by microwaving it in the microwave oven. AAPD.org, Pediatric Dentistry. ADA.org. ADA.org slash public slash directory slash index dot html comma dentists. ADA.org slash directory slash dentist crch form dot html comma list of dentists. Dry cleaning info guide. Dry cleaning is a service business that's notorious for complaints. They're not miracle workers and the truth is that the dry cleaning method is probably not all that effective compared to what you can do by yourself at home. Part of the problem is that clothing manufacturers do not put proper cleaning instructions on their garment labels. If you follow their instructions and it ruins a garment, take it back to the store for a refund. Hand washing your own clothes in mild detergent is probably the best and most economical way to clean clothes partly because of the pollution factor with dry cleaning and partly because it generally works better. At the dry cleaners, Point out any special stains or special treatment you want cleaned when you bring the clothing in. They use solvents like perchloroethylene to clean garments instead of water. The solvents are carcinogenic so you should air out a piece of clothing for a day or two before you wear it. If you get back a piece of destroyed clothing like a shirt with the buttons torn off, talk to the manager immediately. Inspect your clothing as soon as you get it back and bring up any problems right there. You are entitled to reimbursement value of a lost piece of clothing. If you keep the receipts of your clothing, it could help you get replacement value back. Dry cleaners don't have to be licensed but many states and municipalities have dry cleaning trade organizations. If you have a dispute, complain to either the local dry cleaning trade organization or the Better Business Bureau, bbb.org. If you're a woman, a dry cleaner doesn't have the right to charge you more for similar items like a shirt slash blouse. Report them to the State Consumer Protection Agency if you see that happening. USDairyCleaning.com American Apparel Manufacturers Association 2500 Wilson Boulevard No. 301 Arlington, Virginia 22201 703-524-1864 800-520-2262 
fax, 703-522-6741. Americanapeeperl.org. They will answer your questions about care of clothing, specifically whether it should be hand washed, machine washed, or dry cleaned. International Fabricare Institute. 12251 Tech Road. Silver Spring, Maryland, 20904. 301 622 1900. IFI.org. Trade Association of Dry Cleaners. National Gown Cleaners. 4100 Moore Park Avenue. San Jose, California, 95117. 408 241 3490. Information on Cleaning and Preserving Gowns. Employment Agencies Info Guide. Beware that many ads in many publications purporting to either find you a good job either here or overseas or touting any kind of business. Opportunity could be a fly-by-night scam taking as much money from as many suckers as possible in a short period of time then moving on and setting up under a new name. These ads are often simply too good to be true, offering either a high-paying job quickly or overseas when in actuality, the job market is. Tough everywhere for good jobs and many countries have tough laws about letting foreigners into work so do yourself a favor and don't fall for them. If you want to work overseas, do your own research at the library or through this book. Employment agencies, headhunters whatever you want to call them sometimes charge a fee for helping you network to find a job, often, the employer pays, but the government has these services and offers them for free if you know where to look. The business section of your library has some good books and newspapers to help you find a job. Investigations into some of these employment firms, particularly those catering to professionals, have revealed that many are scams, taking large upfront fees for essentially just making up a resume and then giving the applicant a generic list of corporate addresses, something you can find in any library. These firms prey on people when they're down and out, looking for a job. Your local colleges can be a good source of ideas. Even if you are not a student, you might still be allowed to use their employment services. Just act like a student and nobody will question you or register for one course and get a student ID. If an employment agency charges an upfront fee then don't bother with it. If they're legitimate, they won't charge you until you get a job. Or all. Promises are meaningless. Get any promises in writing. There are phony scams like someone placing an ad pretending to be a government office looking for workers, then when you take the bait, they charge you an upfront application fee. Never call a 900 number in a job ad. Use the free government employment agency in your area. Use employmentagencies.com. Federal Trade Commission. Washington, D.C. 20580. 800-876. 7060. 202 FTC Help. FTC.gov. Free booklet Help Wanted, Finding a Job. National Fraud Information Center. 800 876 7060. Fraud.org. Tell them your complaints. Legal Services Info Guide. You shall not show partiality toward persons in judgment, but you shall hear the small as well as the great. You shall not be afraid of the face of man, for the judgment is God's. Deuteronomy 1:16-17. There was a case of a woman who hired a lawyer to take her deadbeat ex-husband to court for child support. After three years of dragging the case out, she owed more than $60,000 in legal debts. The lawyer pulled out the night before the trial because she refused to pay and he collected by raiding her retirement fund and bank account. That's the thing about lawyers. They might help you win in court but when it's all said and done, they're often the only real winners. In some situations, they're worthwhile and can save you lots of money, in others, you're better off representing yourself. Some public interest legal organizations may be able to help you. Some law schools have specialties like criminal or family law where they have clinics and offer legal advice for a low fee. If you decide to hire a lawyer for whatever reason, ask friends or the local bar association, yellow pages under lawyer retrieval, about referrals.
you could pick one out of the yellow pages or call a local law school and ask for a referral. Most lawyers specialize in only one area so just because a lawyer did a good job for a friend in a divorce proceeding doesn't necessarily mean that he will do a good job with your lawsuit. You might be able to find a lawyer's background through the Martindale Hubble Law Directory at the library. Broadly speaking, the different types of lawyers are Business Consumer Criminal Estate Planning Government Immigration Intellectual Property Labor Marital Medical Personal Injury Real Estate Tax the four most common ways lawyers charge fees are Flat fee for the specific job Retainer, down payment used against the future fees Hourly rate, generally $50 or more Contingent fee, the lawyer does everything free and only collects a percentage of the judgment if you win Most lawyers should give you a free initial consultation Don't allow yourself to be intimidated by the legalese mumbo-jumbo of the law profession you're the one doing the hiring, you're in the driver's seat. You might talk to several lawyers before deciding on one and they, conversely, can decide whether or not to accept your case. If you're poor, you may qualify for legal assistance. Look in the phone book for a local legal aid society or contact your local social service agency for more information. Payment is generally flat fee or by the hour. The best is the contingency deal where you pay nothing but the fee comes out of the judgment if you win. The lawyer may not like this if you are at the wrong end of the lawsuit because it's a gamble to him. Most lawyers want a retainer fee which is essentially some money up front to start working on your case. Clarify the fee. Many lawyers quote a fee then tack on all kinds of different expenses like research, typing, paper, etc. Ask for an itemized bill. Many lawyers frown on this but it's your money, you have the right to know how it's being spent and more importantly, you have the right to keep an eye on your lawyer so that he doesn't rip you off. Always get a receipt when you pay. Ask that he send you copies of all official correspondence regarding your case so that you know there's action and you can keep up with the progress. Fees are negotiable so you could haggle a bit. If you're paying by the hour, don't try to become his buddy because he will charge you every time he talks to you usually in minimum 15-minute blocks even on the phone. If you're paying by contingency, specify in the contract whether his or her fee, percentage commission, comes before expenses or after. It's much lower if you take out expenses first. An increasing trend these days for legal advice is the use of paralegals which could do the job for a third of the cost of a lawyer. Just like you get second opinions for surgery, get second opinions in legal cases. There was one guy who lost a part of his leg in a construction accident and went to a lawyer who didn't think he had much of a case beyond workman's compensation. He forgot about it until about a year later when he casually mentioned it to another lawyer who promptly filed a suit and got him a million bucks. Also, just like doctors, question suspicious looking charges. Many paralegal services are springing up that can help you with rote legal affairs for a much cheaper price than lawyers. The New York Bar Association's Clients' Bill of Rights is as follows. When I retain a lawyer, I am entitled to one who will be capable of handling my case, will represent me zealously and seek any lawful means to present or defend my case, will keep whatever I reveal in the strictest confidence will give me the right to make the final decisions as to the disposition of my case. Will charge me a reasonable fee and explain to me, in advance, the basis of that fee. Will be considerate and courteous at all times. Will exercise judgments in my interest and not be biased by competing interests. Will inform me periodically about the status of the case and, at my request, provide copies of documents prepared. Will exhibit a high degree of ethical conduct will refer me to other legal counsel if he or she cannot adequately represent me. Major Appliances Info Guide If the warranty has expired on your major appliance and it breaks down, try to find a factory authorized repair shop to get it fixed because the manufacturer has entrusted these people to fix their products and there's an element of credibility here that's better than getting any old Joe to repair it.
If you can't find an authorized dealer in the phone book, contact the manufacturer directly and ask for an authorized service person near you. Sometimes it's not worth getting the appliance repaired. Many of these people inflate the repair work they do so try to find an honest one. Get an estimate before they do the work. Ask for the old parts back if any are replaced. If you have a complaint about a major appliance and have been unable to resolve it through the normal channels, contact the Major Appliance Consumer Action Panel for further action. NASA1.org, National Appliance Service Association. MISTERFIX-IT.com Association of Home Appliance Manufacturers 20 North Wacker Drive Number 1500 Chicago, Illinois 60606 AHAM.org Major Appliance Consumer Action Panel, MACAP 20 North Wacker Drive Number 1500 Chicago, Illinois 60606 312-984-5858 800-621-0477 Sears Appliance Hotline 800-927-7957 800-4 My Home Sears.com Fee Service, You Talk to a Technician Medical Services Info Guide The Art of Medicine Consists of Amusing the Patient While Nature Cures the Disease Illness is the doctor to whom we pay most heed, to kindness, to knowledge, we make promise only, pain we obey. Marcel Proust To me, the ideal doctor would be a man endowed with profound knowledge of life and of the soul, intuitively divining any suffering or disorder of whatever kind and restoring peace by his mere presence. Henri Amiel If you don't have health, you don't have anything. Health is the greatest wealth. A wise man should consider that health is the greatest of human blessings. Hippocrates Doctors are not gods and don't know everything, particularly how you should manage your body. They're human, many work hard, fall victim to stress and become alcoholics, drug addicts, sex addicts, adulterers, money hungry, etc. You should take responsibility for most of your health care. Take care of yourself and educate yourself about illness and first aid. Go to your doctor only when you have a major problem and let him or her guide you but don't necessarily take their word as gospel. There are always second opinions, holistic approaches, and your own mind-body, self-treatment connection. Pick the appropriate doctor. Go to a general practitioner for preliminary basic care rather than a specialist right off to save money on your bills. The consensus among enlightened people is that the doctor is there to help fix you if you break down but you and you alone are responsible for your own health and well-being and you are responsible to check out alternatives when you get sick. Your doctor is a western trained man or woman who knows basically about pills and surgery not about the alternative medicine movement nor about some of those pioneers out there claiming to have procedures the mainstream medical community doesn't understand and won't accept. Who's to say the medical community is right just because they're the establishment? In one sense, the field of medicine is a business. They're trying to protect their interests. I heard of stories on talk radio about some guy who found a cure for cancer and every other disease that has toxins simply by running a mild electric current through the body but the medical establishment rejected him and called him a quack without even giving him a shot to prove himself. If this was really true, it would render much of the medical industry obsolete with rampant unemployment and loss of research funding so it's in their interests to criticize these offshoot techniques and squash them in order to preserve their bread and butter but then on the other hand, you would think that if somebody really did come up with an incredible medical cure for any disease, those in the mainstream medical establishment would do the right thing and get it out into the world. Community The solution to all our woes medically could be something that simple. The guy made sense when he said that this shock would clean the blood out and kill all the toxins in it which is why I don't criticize. I'm interested in the loner scientist working on his own ideas like the Pasteurs, the Edisons, Curies, and Teslas of old times, unlike today where just about all medical research is funded by corporate entities and carried out in an institutional setting which makes you wonder if they have their own agendas which deviates from objective truth. 
A doctor is not a mystical person with divine knowledge. He studied hard in school, got his MD license and is now a doctor but he has a fallible memory and can't keep up with all the new developments which is why you should research your illnesses on your own because you might just pull a Lorenzo's oil deal, find an obscure treatment somewhere not widely accepted by the medical community that works great for you. The Lorenzo's oil story is about a woman who saved her son from diabetes when all the doctors said it was hopeless by finding alternative treatments and using them. Treat your doctor with respect but question any tests he wants to perform to avoid unnecessary ones. The best way to save money on doctors is to buy a good medical book and use it. Treat yourself medically for minor maladies. The truth is that most medical conditions go away in time. Most over-the-counter slash ODC drugs are useless. Aspirin is one of the few proven to help many ailments. Most general practitioners don't have the time or the inclination to read up on the latest medical developments because they're overworked anyway, seeing an endless stream of patients coming through their offices all the time. There's a chronic shortage of doctors just about everywhere. If you ever develop a serious condition, go to a medical library and do your own research. It could save your life. Use the internet but be wary of bogus websites trying to sell a bill of goods. Medical doctors are supposed to be in the business because they're good people and want to help others as prescribed by the Hippocratic Oath. Of course, we all know that's not entirely true. Doctors want to make money just like anyone else. In fact, many have to make lots of money just to break even what with the high costs of running their business and the high cost of malpractice insurance which every doctor must have, hence, the revolving door, packing patients in for all manner of illness perceived or real. And then there are the constant follow UPS, each costing money. Watch out for unnecessary surgeries and medical tests. You should comparison shop with doctors just like with everyone else. Prices differ vastly for the same procedures. Except for specialists in hospitals, all doctors in their own practices or doctors working for a clinic slash health plan are business people. The doctor in business for himself has to earn a lot of money to cover his bills. The doctor working for someone is usually on a piecemeal slash commission basis, getting a fee for every patient he sees and X number of dollars for every procedure he does from a prearranged pay scale so he tries to pack them in. A common negative side effect of this system is that if a doctor working for a healthcare provider gets a prescribed fee for every patient he sees, he may try to spend as little time as he can with each patient because he gets the same fee whether he spends 2 minutes or 40 minutes. It all counts as one session. There are good doctors out there but don't necessarily trust anyone just because they wear a white lab coat. Doctors operate either privately by themselves or as part of a larger medical group. The advantage of having your personal physician belong to a group is that there is always a doctor available to see you and the group has more knowledge collectively and probably some specialists among them to better deal with your medical needs. When going for surgery, strive for the least amount of treatment possible. Try for outpatient surgery which means you get the surgery and go straight home but barring that, go for as minimal a stay as possible. Doctors who don't perform many surgeries are not as good as ones who do them often. Check on the track record of your doctor. Never sign a blanket medical release form authorizing others to see your medical records. Keep them private. Misdiagnosis could be deadly. Either get a second opinion or if you find yourself getting sicker or not improving, be direct and assertive with the doctor about it. Doctors with their own lab equipment in their offices have higher error rates than exclusive testing labs. A hospital is one of the worst places to be to catch another infection so get out as fast as you can. Many doctors are alcoholics or drug addicts. Watch your doctor for her signs. Some doctors automatically schedule patients for follow UPS just to collect that extra $50 even if there's nothing wrong with them. Instead of hiring a doctor, consider hiring a nurse. Look in the yellow pages under nurses. Some HMOs are using nurse practitioners instead of doctors. Questions to consider are What type of practice does the doctor offer? Does the doctor have any limitations such as not treating babies or women only, etc.? Is the doctor accepting new patients? 
Does the doctor belong to your HMO or another managed care plan? Does the doctor accept your insurance plan or Medicare? What licenses does he have? What hospital is the doctor affiliated with? Can you contact him in case of emergency? When he goes out of town, who takes over? What is the average waiting time for an appointment from the time you call? Miscellaneous Info Guide Hairdressers are required to be licensed in every state. If you're a woman, hairdressers aren't allowed to charge you more for a haircut than for a man. If they do, speak up about it or report it to your state consumer protection agency. Other beauty experts are springing into view such as electrolysists and tattoo cosmetologists who don't have to be licensed. Tattoo cosmetologists tattoo blush and eyeliner on you permanently. This field is entirely subjective. You don't have much protection should something go wrong so watch it. One woman has a clown-like reddish face. Others say the permanent eyeliner and the permanent red lipstick is good. Some people have damp, leaking basements that need to be fixed. The basement waterproofing business is entirely unregulated. Some of these companies have only one method and use it blindly. A reputable company will come in. Analyze your basement and draw from among the several methods it has at its disposal. The best way to check out a carpenter is to request to look at an example of his slash her craftsmanship abilities by looking at a few previous jobs which they should show you on request. Some municipalities have licensing requirements for driveway installation and repair. The biggest complaint is with asphalt, the complaint being that they don't make it thick enough. When getting electrical work done, all materials must be approved by all, underwriters' laboratories, and all work must adhere to the National Electrical Code. When getting extermination work done, get some conditional guarantee that the exterminator will return until the bugs are all gone. Some companies offer this guarantee, some don't. For more information, contact National Pest Control Association 8150 Leesburg Pike Vienna, Virginia, 22180. Tiling floors is craftsman's work and can be expensive. Most want money up front but hold off some payment until you see the final job and you're satisfied. Floor refinishers who sand then stain floors are craftsmen and should see the job before they give you a firm estimate. If you get an estimate over the phone, it's a giveaway that the person is sloppy and not really a craftsman. Beware of paying any skilled craftsman until you are satisfied with the final job. Roofing is notorious for rip-offs because you, the owner, can't see the work done especially if you are elderly and won't climb a ladder to check. Never hire someone off the street or from an ad in the local newspaper unless they're somewhat established with a real building for a business and not just a truck and some equipment. Roofing is a craftsman's skill and requires a diversity of equipment. Get a warranty for the work which should be good to prevent leakage for at least several years. I've seen a case of a roof sealing company buy gas at a gas station, mix it water and spray it on roofs at $200 a shot. The cost of siding should be calculated exactly in advance. Consider styrofoam panels before the siding goes on to further insulate your house. When getting a pool built, ask to have the bill itemized and pay in installments as the job is done. The homeowner should hold the contractor responsible for any damage to the property such as broken water pipes. Perhaps check to see if the contractor has ample insurance in case something like that happens. The pool contractor should provide you with warranties and instructions from the pool manufacturer. National Spa and Pool Institute 2111 Eisenhower Avenue Alexandria, Virginia, 22314 800 323 3996. Swimmingpool.com. Will resolve disputes between consumers and pool builders. The landscaping business is full of guys with pickup trucks and a lawn mower out to make some money. While there's nothing wrong with making an honest buck, leave the skilled work to skilled gardeners. You should be able to find out what they know about gardening just by talking to them and asking them what colors some flowers are like orchids or mums. You can usually judge the expertise of a painting company by the breadth of the contract. Do they provide an estimate of how much paint the job will take, the type, color, manufacturer, product number, etc.? 
professionals use professional gear like heavy canvas drop cloths, rollers, two-gallon buckets, etc. All states and some municipalities issue licenses to plumbers who meet their standards but many plumbers still operate without a license so if you want a legitimate plumber, ask to see the license. United Association of Plumbers and Pipe Fitters 901 Massachusetts Avenue N.W. Washington, D.C. 20001 All licensed plumbers who pass the stringent standards belong to this organization. You can get local referrals from them. They can give you the address of the local union where you can go to resolve disputes with workmanship. National Association of Plumbing Heating Cooling Contractors 1016 20th ST Northwest Washington, D.C. 20036 All licensed plumbing heating cooling contractors who pass the stringent standards belong to this organization. You can get local referrals from them. They can give you the address of the local union where you can go to resolve disputes with workmanship. Rent to Own Info Guide Rent to Own is a fancy name for an overinflated, outrageous loan for a product like a VCR. At any point during the payment phase, you can return the product and that signifies the end of the contract. This is one of the worst deals around. The industry is underregulated and the vendors prey on low-income people who can't afford to buy the products so they end up paying out three times what it's worth over a few years of weekly payments. The rental charge can be three or four times what it would cost if you paid cash or financed the purchase at the highest interest rate typically charged in installment sales. Before signing a rent-to-own contract, ask yourself the following questions. Is the item something I absolutely have to have right now? Can I delay the purchase until I have saved enough money to pay cash or at least make a down payment on an installment plan? Does a retail store offer a layaway plan for the item? Have I considered all my credit options, including applying for retail credit from the merchant or borrowing money from a credit union, bank, or small loan company? Would a used item purchased from a garage sale, classified ad, or second-hand store serve the purpose? If you decide that rent-to-own is the best choice for you, here are some questions you should ask before you sign on the dotted line. What is the total cost of the item? The total cost can be determined by multiplying the amount of each payment by the number of payments required to purchase the item. Make sure to add in any additional charges, for example, finance, handling or balloon payments at the end of the contract. Am I getting a new or used item? Can I purchase the item before the end of the rental term? If so, how is the price calculated? Will I get credit for all of my payments if I decide to purchase the item? Is there a charge for repairs during the rental period? Will I get a replacement while the rented item is not in my possession? What happens if I am late on a payment? Will the item be repossessed? Will I pay a penalty if I return the item before the end of the contract period? Comparison shop among various rent-to-own merchants. Contact your local or state consumer protection agency to find out if there are any complaints on record against the business. Check for any specific state laws. Read the contract carefully and make sure you understand all the terms and get all promises in writing. Remember, know what you are paying. Compare the cash price plus finance charges in an installment plan with the total cost of a rent-to-own transaction. Long-term rent-to-own contracts cost so much more than installment plans that you could rent an item, make a number of payments, return the item, buy it on an installment plan and still come out ahead. Rentacenter.com 800-275-2696 Service Businesses Info Guide Service businesses are often the worst for resolving complaints because they implicitly involve something personal about the service provider, suggesting that he is inferior in some way. For big jobs, get the contract as clearly in writing as you can. Be clear. Be specific. Be complete. Doing so will save you problems later on. Chapter 3 Consumer Interest Websites Consumer Behavior Websites slash Consumer Psychology ConsumerPsychologist.com ConsumersInternational.org
en.wikipedia.org slash wiki slash consumer underscore spending en.wikipedia.org slash wiki slash consumerism retailtrends.com shop.org consumer research simply go to the library look through last year's consumer reports magazine consumerreports.org until you find the product tests for the product you are interested in Consumer Reports also sell an annual buying guide which is a book that covers all the major products they do tests on. If you're really into consumer product research like guns or cars, find information books and magazines in these topics to help you make an informed choice. Beware of scams before you buy. There are many. Beware of the hidden costs of shipping. For any product you want to buy, type the following term into a search engine. The product Product Review The Product, Consumer Research Car Tires, Product Review Car Tires, Consumer Research Running Shoes, Product Review Running Shoes, Consumer Research The Shopping Bags.com is a website based on a TV shopping show where they compare and critique different products. Try number 640.73 or TX335 at the library which is the shopping section. ResellerRatings.com ReviewPlace.com BadBusinessBureau.com BBB.org slash complaints slash file.html BBB.org slash library BizRate.com Reports on companies CBC.ca slash consumer ConsumerLab.com ConsumerRatings.com C-O-N-S-U-M-E-R-R-E-S-E-A-R-C-H-G-U-I-D-E.com ConsumerReview.com Product Reviews ConsumersDigest.com ConsumerWatchdog.org Cosmeticscop.com FTC.gov slash FTC slash Consumer Consumer Safety Websites cpsc.gov, U.S. Consumer Product Safety Commission wemakatesafer.com, search recalled products tool to check products for recalls saferproducts.gov, database developed by the U.S. Consumer Product Safety Commission recalls.gov, unsafe, hazardous or defective products, including, food, medicine, cosmetics, boats, motor vehicles, and environmental products KeepingBabiesSafe.org ToyInfo.org KidsAndCars.org CarSat.org Safety Belt Safe USA HowToConsign.com Turning Your Cluttered Closets Into Cash SafeKids.org KidsInDanger.org Expertise.com Slash Home Hyphen and Hyphen Garden Slash Baby Hyphen Proofing Hyphen and Hyphen Child Hyphen Safety Hyphen Guide ProductsAmerica.com FabricLink.com slash care slash home.cfm How to clean anything.com WackyUses.com Tech gadgets slash products Technical gadgets go from wireless telephones to computers to internet products. Use the following websites to do research on tech products. ADC.com Apple.com ATT.com Ostech.info BEA.com BenQ.us BestBuy.com Beyond.com BIGDCOM.com BusinessWeek.com Go to Tech Buying Guide BuyComp.com BuyerZone.com